Hi guys, welcome to the second video of the Web3.js series. Today, you will learn all about the different functionalities of the Web3 Utils package. This video is divided into six sections, each focusing on distinct functionalities. First, we will see all the different ways that we can import the package. Then you will learn how to generate random bytes in different formats, how to perform conversions between hex values, strings and numbers, hashing functions, addresses, packing, padding, and in the last section, we'll take a look at the compare block numbers function. If you want to connect with other developers and get Web3.js support, I will drop the link to the Discord in the description. So let's keep things simple and get started. There are three different ways that we can import the utils package. The first one is importing the Web3 module, then initializing a provider, and then we are able to access the package by typing web3.utils to way, for example. The second one, which is my favorite, is just to import the utils package from the web tree, and then we are able to use also any function. And the third one is just to import a specific function, and then you are able to use it here. There are two ways that we can generate random bytes. First function that is random bytes receives a parameter of the size of how many bytes you want to generate and it will return the bytes in an array format. And the second one that is random hex will also receive as a parameter the size and it will return the bytes in a hexadecimal format. If you don't send any arguments, the default value is 32. So let's run this. And as you can see, it's returning 32 bytes in an array format and this one 32 bytes in a hexadecimal format. And then if we put two, it will generate two bytes in an array and two bytes in a hexadecimal format. To perform conversions between Ethereum denominations, we have two different functions. The first one is to weigh that can receive any type of unit and it will always return weigh. And the second one is from weigh that it will always receive weigh and it can return any type of value. So for example, if we want to convert one Ether to weigh, we can use this function utils dot to weigh one and then we can specify that this is one Ether. And if we want to do the same, we can use the following. Instead of saying one eater, then we can run this in the console. And now to use this function, let's convert 10 to the power of 18 way to eater. So to perform this, we can use utils from way. We can send this number. 10 to the power of 18, and then we can say, please return this value in ether. And then let's do the same here. Console.log utils out from way. We can send 10 to the power of 9, and please return this value in gway. If we run the console, we can see that 10 to the power of 18 way is equal to 1 ether, and 10 to the power of 9 way is equal to 1 gway. There are several ways that we can use to convert any value into a hexadecimal value. But the easiest one is to use the function to hex, which will accept any parameter and will always return a hexadecimal value. So this function can accept numbers, big int, strings, booleans, and objects. Let's run this function to see the values. As you can see, it returns the number 10 in hexadecimal value that is A, A. The number 10 as a string is first decoded into an ASCII value. So the one character is equal to 49 in the ASCII value. And then this is converted into a hexadecimal value that is 31. And the same with zero is equal to 48. And then this is equal to 30. The boolean is equal to zero. And this is the result of the object that we sent. There are other alternatives to convert to hexadecimal values like number to hex from decimal, UTFA to hex, and ASCII to hex, but they will just return the same value. So it's just easier to use to hex. So you can see here we have the 10, 10, and the text as a string. There is another tricky case when you want to convert bytes in an array format to hexadecimal value. So there are two different functions. Let's just create first an array that can be 72 and 12. So the first function that we can use is to hex, and then we can send this array as a parameter. But this will read this array as a uint8 array. But if you actually want to send this array as a bytes, so you need to use the function bytes to hex, 
we can send the same array and this one will be read as a bytes. So let's run that in the console. And as you can see, this one returns a different value and this one returns the value of two bytes. 48, that is the 72, and 0c, that is 12. Now we can convert hexadecimal values to UTF and ASCII values. I will always recommend to use UTF since it has a broader range of characters and can support emojis as well. So in this case, I will send this emoji as a hexadecimal value and then you will see the difference between the UTF and the ASCII value. So let's run this in the console, run to character. And as you can see, the UTF returns the emoji itself, but the ASCII value returns some weird characters. If we want to convert hexadecimal values into numbers, there are three different ways. The first function, toNumber, will return the value in number format. The second one, hex to number string, will convert the hexadecimal value into a number, but it will return this value as a string. And the third function, to big int, will return the number in a big int format. So let's run this in the console. And as you can see, we have number, string, and big int. For hashing, there are two main functions that we can use. The first one is SHA3 and the second one is Solidity SHA3. SHA3 will always receive a string as a parameter and it will return the hash in a hexadecimal value. And Solidity SHA3 can receive a string, a uint, address, or bytes as a parameter and it will return the hash in a hexadecimal value. Let's run this in the console, hashing.js. And as you can see, the first two values are the same because this web tree is treated as a string in both of them. And then this is the hash of the un123, this is the hash of the address, and this is the hash of the bytes. If you want to see if an address is valid, before you were able to use the isAddress function, but this one is deprecated right now, so we can use the function to check some address. If we pass an invalid address, it will return an error. So for example, let me change this C for a H, and then let's see what happened. Our address, it will return the error that this is an invalid Ethereum address. And if we pass an address with all the characters lowercase, this will return the corrected address with the checksum perform. So some of the characters will be lowercase and uppercase. So let's see this in action. This is the address that I pass as a parameter and this is the address that it returned. And as you can see, some of the characters are uppercase like this C, AA, etc. If you want to learn more about checksum address, you can check the ERC55 checksum address encoding. The encode packet function has the same behavior as the solidity avi dot encode packet. And if we pack strings, it will pack them and return a hex value. But if we pack numbers, it will treat them as a UN256. So it will pass them with zeros to convert them into a 32 bytes number. And that will pack the different values. So let me show you what I mean. Note adding. So as you can see here, you're just packing the 10. 10 and 10, but here is padding every 10 with 32 bytes of zeros, and then the 10 in a hexadecimal value is the A. Then the same is happening here, and the same is happening here. If we go to Remix ID and we check Solidity, here we have the same functions and it will return the same values. There are two main functions that we can use for padding pad right and pad left. The first parameter that this function will receive is the number that we want to pad. In this case, I want to pad the number 10 the hexadecimal value will be an A. The second value is the number of characters that we want to receive after padding. So let's put 6 and let's try this function. Let's put the same in pad left. And then as you can see we got 0x, A, and then it pads the rest with 5 zeros to the right. And then below we can see 0x, it pads everything to the left with 5 zeros, and then we have the A. There is a third optional parameter that can be the character or number that you want to use for padding your input. For example, if instead of zeros you want to pad this with the character X and this one with the character Y, we can do it as well. You can see that we have X here and Y's here. And lastly, we have this function that allows you to compare block numbers. If the first argument is higher than the second one, it will return one. If it's lower, it will return a minus one. And if they are equal, it will return a zero. We can send the strings pending and latest, or we can send block numbers as well. So let's run this. And as you can see, we got a one here. If you want to explore this further, you can go to the docs and you will find one by one all the functions with code samples as well. And if there is something else you would like to know, please share it in the comments. And that's everything for today. In the next video, we will explore wallets and accounts to send transactions to the blockchain. Don't forget to join the Discord if you want to connect with other developers and get Web3.js support. See you soon.